The Orb of State, the St. Edward's Crown, and the Queen Mary's Crown are all safely back in the Crown Jewels collection at the Tower of London. And of course, there are many people making sure they all stay safe, like the beef eaters, the famous ravens, and some American tourists from the Midwest who are complaining about the lack of Applebee's. But there's also another crown in there inside of the tower that is probably not going to be used anytime soon. I'm talking about the Coronet of Charles. Now, to be honest with you, it's a pretty bizarre piece that looks like it was created by a couple of people who had taken some psychedelics. Most people are not old enough to have ever seen it being worn, and the fact is, it's actually only been worn by a royal one single time, back in 1969. It was worn by none other than the then Cambridge student Prince Charles at Caernarfon Castle for the 21-year-old over-the-top, unabashedly camp investiture as the Prince of Wales. Well, it's been more than 50 years since that day, and Charles recently has been wearing a much larger crown. And now, of course, he is the king, and his son Prince William has taken over the Wales title. It was actually Edward I in the late 1281 who did a little bit of rampaging, and he brought the Welsh into the fold. And then, in a little bit of 14th century PR, he made his oldest son the Prince of Wales in 1301. So now that the high of the coronation is passed, it would be pretty logical to assume that it is time for the coronet of Charles to be dusted off and for William to start maybe trying to speak some Welsh. Well, except for one thing, this 700 plus year old tradition has just been gotten rid of. Not only is William not going to get the chance to play king in waiting for the TV cameras at his own Wales investiture, but it also means that his gorgeous wife Catherine, the Princess of Wales, has been denied the chance to get Alexander McQueen to design yet another beautiful dress. And the news of this decision came through a source close to the prince, and a piece appeared in the Sunday Times reassuring everybody that William has already begun considering his coronation. Oh, I know, I was worried about it too. In the piece, not only does this source distance the 40-year-old from the disaster of the homage of the people in his father's recent ceremony, but it also sets up William as being poised to single-handedly keep the Commonwealth together. Well, all right then. But in between William trying to charm some Republican-minded countries, he has also made the decision not to have an investiture, which is a pretty good indication that William will continue to break with tradition as heir to the throne. This source spoke with the Sunday Times' Roy Anika, saying, You can see it in how he has taken having an investiture off the table, and his thinking on how to leave a legacy in communities rather than just go in to do ribbon cutting. Now, actually, investitures are only for the Prince of Wales, because back in the 14th century, gender equality was not a thing. But if William and Catherine really wanted to go to the effort of staging one, I'm sure they would find Catherine, the monarchy's number one star player, a leading role. Now, when you think about it, it's not difficult to understand why the prince and princess may have no interest in going down the investiture road, and it doesn't have anything to do with the idea of having to spend time in Wales. The most obvious reason for William and Catherine to pull the plug on the investiture is money. Charles's uncle, the Earl of Snowden, completely created and stage-managed and came up with Charles's ceremony. So he basically combined 60s mod style with medieval pageantry, and it was all created for the purposes of TV propaganda. I think George V may have been turning in his grave at the sight of that. Originally, there was a crown proposed for the occasion by the royal jeweler, and it was rejected because they wanted a cheaper option, and that's why the coronet that ended up being made for Charles's big day was topped with a gold-plated ping-pong ball, a detail that was actually kept from him at that time. So with Charles's investiture, the photos of which make him look so incredibly young, the age of royalty as entertainment was officially here. That 1969 ceremony may have been a big success, attracting an audience of 500 million people around the world, but it also came with quite a hefty price tag. Of course, there's no exact figure available for how much it cost, but there were 2,500 service people involved, and Lord Snowden built a whole set for the event, including a big Madonna tour-worthy Perspex canopy designed to allow the TV cameras to get a great view. So no, nothing about it was cheap. 
The point that I'm trying to make is this. Investments are not something that you can easily do on the cheap. So if William and Catherine did decide that they wanted their own, it would require somebody spending quite a lot of money, probably tens of millions of dollars on something that would basically just be a marketing ploy. And see, William and Catherine are very aware of the optics of that choice. After all, William and Catherine are the same people who often go to food and baby banks, and they listen to the people. They are careful. They don't want to make themselves look like hypocrites. They understand that there is a cost of living crisis, and so they need to tread carefully. But even if we forget the money, there are other problems. If William and Catherine did decide they wanted to go down that route, it would be very risky on the home front as well. Since the coronation, the couple has rolled out a social media promotional push that is pretty in your face for them. The Kensington Palace social media accounts have been putting out overly produced videos of William and Catherine. It's almost like they're a couple of influencers. And I do not believe it has gone unnoticed over at Crown HQ that this campaign only features the most token shots of King Charles. Ever since Meg's had happened, Charles and William have become a double act. And we really saw that with that tender kiss that William gave his father after delivering the homage of royal blood during the coronation. It was precious to see that little kiss on the cheek was just so sweet. But if William and Catherine want to keep on marketing themselves as some type of alternative, some type of understudy king and queen, then they also run the risk of bothering his majesty and triggering a return to the past when different royal houses reportedly competed with each other. It's basically like succession. You see, for William and Catherine to stage their own mini-coronation ceremony, they would run the risk of aggravating his majesty and making their transparent PR grab seem a lot more obvious. Already, some people are saying that they're coming very close to looking disloyal, to looking predatory even. I mean, like they couldn't even give Charles a month to enjoy his post-coronation glow and let Camilla catch up on her shows. But there's also something else that we need to consider, because nobody ever said the royal game was an easy game to play. We're about to hit a serious bunting dry spell. It's going to be 20 years until Charles' first jubilee, and about the same length of time at best before Prince George walks up the aisle with his woman of choice. So what lies ahead for the next couple of decades could be a pretty empty period where there are no special occasions that demand that Brits have street parties and get days off and are made to feel some warm and fuzzy thoughts about the monarchy. The royal workforce is certainly aging, so them going out there opening hospital wards and discussing carbon credits is all well and good, but it doesn't really register on the pomp scale. At some point in time, Buckingham Palace is going to need some kind of spectacle, involving all the glitz, all the glamour, all the tiaras, and also probably Princess Charlotte proving to be the next Princess Anne. So it looks like a very tricky situation indeed for William and Catherine. And the real tragedy in all of this is that Anne has been denied the opportunity to dust off the short aquamarine number that she wore back in 1969. I'm sure that she's still got the legs for it.